I could have left and maybe gone somewhere else. But no, I wanted to stay with the Cowboys and finish my career and be loyal to you know my team and my teammates. You know, you get you grow up with, you get to know their families, their kids, and you just want to stay at home because they become your family and you never leave your family. <laughs> Pro Football Hall of Famer Mel Renfro, a defensive back who spent his entire career with the Dallas Cowboys, was inducted and honored uh, in their ring in 1981. And now at 80 years old, he played in four Super Bowls. He has two Super Bowl rings to go along with that Hall of Fame ring. Mel Renfro, our latest Hall of Famer here on After Hours. Mel, this week must bring back a lot of memories for you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think about it all the time that I was fortunate enough to have played in eight uh, NFC championship games. That's eight opportunities to go to the Super Bowl, uh, winning four, losing four, and winning two Super Bowls and losing two Super Bowls. So it was quite a run, quite an experience. I hear from players now and then. Tom Brady's a great example. He actually says that the losses in Super Bowls stick with him longer, maybe impact him more than do the wins in Super Bowls. What were your emotions like uh, following losses versus following the wins? Well, uh, you know, bittersweet. Our first Super Bowl, Super Bowl Five, was kind of a, uh, a different kind of a game. There's no way we lose that game. There were some... Uh, suspicious calls by the officials, uh, you know, uh, an alleged tip pass, uh, <laughs> and we lost that game. But, you know, fortunately, a week after that, I went out to the Pro Bowl and returned two punts for touchdowns and was MVP <laughs> as a defensive back. So that that uh, year was good for me. And the very next year, uh, Super Bowl six, we came back and won the Super Bowl. So, you know, my career is just uh, uh, spotted with all kind of good things, and I'm just, you know, great to have been a, a, a cowboy and great to have had the opportunity to play in Super Bowls. I would love to hear your perspective on – the drought for the Cowboys now because I speak to a lot of Cowboys fans, Mel, and they they continue every year to have a little bit of hope that the Super Bowl drought will end. And then, of course, it, it, to this point, it has not. So as you follow the Cowboys, uh, how do you feel about the, the modern-day Dallas? Well, you know, that's a very, very good question, and I get asked that more times than you would believe. Uh <laughs> And I, you know, I know football. I started playing football when I was four years old, and through you know high school and, and college and, and the pros. I know football, uh, offensively, defensively, every aspect of it. And have, having played under Coach Landry and, and, and what I learned from him, uh, but I, I got to admit, I can't figure out today's Cowboys. I cannot figure out what the problem is, how they can be so good. Uh, in certain games, and in so bad in certain games. The, the, the consistency is just not there. And, you know, this game, especially going to a Super Bowl, you've got to have consistency. But i, I, I got to admit, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I can't uh, figure it out. I, I talk to my wife about it all the time. I talk to my <laughs> friends, and I talk to and interviews uh, constantly, and I can't figure it out. How, you, how you, can, you can be hot and cold, as the Cowboys have been, not only this past year, but you know, in the last 20 years. Mel Renfro is a Pro Football Hall of Famer, spent his entire career with the Dallas Cowboys, a defensive back playing multiple positions, but actually was a halfback when he was at the University of Oregon. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence here on CBS Sports Radio. Uh, Just since I mentioned that, what was it like to change positions at the highest level, Mel? It's funny. uh, When I played in, in high school and college, you know, we never left the field. I, I played uh, offense, defense, uh, all the special teams. We never left the field. So, you know, I was pretty good at, 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 at you know, offense and defensively, and, and carrying the ball was my specialty. So, uh, you know, I got to admit, it wasn't a, a difficult uh, ch- change for me to just go strictly defense. So I could have gone strictly offense, but. Uh, I think that my career was prolonged by playing defense because, you know, offensively you're, you're going to get hit. Uh, mm-hmm. They're going to come at you. And 11 after one, and, 
you know, on defense, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's one after one. So uh, I, I was fortunate to, to have landed uh, in defense and, and haven't been able to play 14 years. I would not have been able to do that playing offense. You make a great point. You're right. And, and we see the statistics with running backs uh, specifically and how their career arc is relatively short. So we were talking about these Dallas Cowboys. They obviously have some playmakers and some very bright stars on the defensive side of the ball. One of them, Trayvon Diggs, who this season had 11 interceptions. Now you led the NFL with 10 interceptions going back uh, into the late 60s, so 1969. Uh, what do you think of Trayvon? Almost the modern day you or a little bit like you <laughs> I, I like him I, I like him uh you know i watch him very closely and i i, I, I see his techniques uh, he's got got good feet he's got a good sense for where the ball is um uh, uh one thing i'd like to see more of him is for him to to, to be more uh of a tackler uh he, he just tends not to to be probably, I would say, as tough as I am. I know he might disagree with that, but, you know, he's a good, an excellent football player, a pro bowler, all pro, and I think he's got a real bright future ahead of him. The Dallas Cowboys are are still labeled America's team, and, and I think that goes back to the, the era that you played in and, and anyone who can talk to me about Tom Landry. The stories, he's probably one of my first memories of a coach in the NFL and his style, his professionalism, not to mention his track record. But the Cowboys are still this brand that people flock to. Why is it? What's so special about the Dallas Cowboys, Mel? Well, I, I think we set the tone, you know, back in the, the late 60s and 70s uh, and in the, uh, the the early 90s where uh, we, we proved to, to be, you know, that star uh, seemed to represent uh, a lot. And uh, people got accustomed to uh, us being America's team. And, you know, Dallas has always had the flair, you know, with the, the cheerleaders and uh, all the pump and things that they do, and they're, they're fun to watch. You know, you know, even Dak and, and, the, and the boys now they uh, play sometimes or most of the time some really good, exciting football. It's just at those times when they're not on cue and uh, they let us down. But uh, like I say, I, I know football, but I can't figure out what's happening with those Cowboys. Uh, you know, this these days. Mel Renfro was inducted into the Cowboys Ring of Honor in 1981 and then the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the mid-90s. And uh, two-time Super Bowl champ, played in a lot of championship games, and we're so pleased to have him here after hours on CBS Sports Radio. From what I read, you were pretty dang fast, Mel. Uh, r- ran a 4-6-5-40? Uh, it was more like a 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> I, I was, uh, when I ran that 4-6-5, I was running backwards. <laughs> So then, Mel, you also played with Bob Hayes, right, who was an Olympian, and I was reading back and forth some of these stories about who was faster, who was the better athlete. So what do you think? Well, they never paired Bob Hayes and me together because they thought maybe one of us would pull a muscle trying to, you know, and they they didn't want the publicity of who can beat who. But, you know, I I knew Bob very well and the way he ran his routes and his speed and all that. So I had, had no problem covering him. And so, uh, but it was fun, you know, Bob, Bob Hayes and I were just great friends and great teammates. And I tell you, when he came in the league in, in 65 and 66, he just, he took away man to man coverage. The people, the teams had to go, the defenses had to go to zones to drop back deep to be able to cover the guy. So, uh, it was just a, a privilege to be able to have played with the guy. And, and, you know, I, I was pretty, pretty fast. You know, I ran track. <laughs> high school, college, and uh, you know, I broke some records. And, um, you know, I got to pat myself on the shoulder. But, uh, but, you know, I just enjoyed the game so much. Were you a trash talker? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you know, no nobody talked trash to me because they would have to eat their words. And, and they, they knew it. And uh, so they, they leave me alone and, because, as a matter of fact, in the early 70s, uh, they stopped throwing the ball at me. I... I did get no action, and that's probably why I didn't get more interceptions. But you know, they they just couldn't it couldn't beat me. Uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah, it's no fun not not getting thrown at because that's that's what it's all about. It's that 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 contact and one on one interaction. And uh, but you know, it, it it was a good career. I still maintained 
I mean, my level of play, and uh, it's just a, such a great game, and uh, you know, I, I'm just so glad to be a part of, of. So, Mel, not everyone gets to retire on a high note. You had played in your fourth Super Bowl. You retired after a win. So, what are your memories of that last Super Bowl championship? I'm not sure if you had already planned to retire or if you made the decision after. But what do you remember about that last appearance on the NFL's biggest stage? Well, you know, uh, ironically, I was not supposed to play in that game. My knee, I hadn't played in five, six games, and my knee was just gone. I knew that I would retire after that game. But uh, in the second uh, second quarter, I believe Benny Barnes went down at corner, and there was nobody else. Uh, Mark Washington, we had Mark Washington, but he was hobbling around with a sore knee, and, and Coach Gene Stallings came over to me and said, he said, Pro, that was my nickname, he said, Pro, can you go? And he knew I hadn't played a practice the down in six weeks, but, you know, he knew that I was tough and that I would go out there and I was the best chance to fill that position. And I played uh, three quarters and uh, 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 held up fairly well. Of course, uh, Harvey Martin and Randy White were giving to Craig Morton the fits, so he couldn't wasn't really on in his passing, but uh, I was fortunate to be able to to play in my last game, going out, being a world champion, and uh, I tell you, uh, those are the memories uh, you know I talk about. Uh, to tell my grandkids, and uh, I tell you, it just, it just doesn't get any better than that. I know that's an old cliche, but I don't ever get tired of saying it. Well, it's yeah. amazing to be able to catch up with you, and you're welcome on the show anytime. Mel Renfro is a 1996 Hall of Famer, played his entire career with the Dallas Cowboys. Mel, is that important to you to have played your entire career with one franchise? Yes, no, no question about it. You know, sometimes you, you look at the guys today, and you don't see the loyalty that you saw back in the days that I played. And uh, you know, I could have, I could have left and maybe gone somewhere else. But no, I wanted to stay with the Cowboys and finish my career and be loyal to you know my team that uh, and and my teammates who, you know, you get you grow up with, you get to know their families, their kids, and. Uh, you just want to stay at home because they become your family and you never leave your family. Loyalty is such a lost art and quality in sports. You travel safely. So pleased to be able to catch up with the two of you in advance of Super Bowl 56. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amy.